Hi everyone and welcome back for part 4 of our advanced dialogue tutorial series. Previously on the series we've got the player able to walk up and interact with the, a, 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 um, the NPC and the NPC has lines of dialogue which you can cycle through like so. Now as you can see it just loops around back to the start after it's finished its conversation. This episode we're going to add the end dialogue task which will allow us to end the dialogue at the end of a conversation tree and return back to the gameplay. So to start things off we need to create a new task so the way this works is in a sequence I'm just going to delete actually the previous sequence I set up as part of the demo. So a display line here um, let's put another display line in and just change this for argument's sake here is the second line of dialogue um, like so and we're going to add a task at the end of this one saying end dialogue so we've got start dialogue and we have an end dialogue so you want to go up to top here and say new task and choose bt task blueprint base and this will open it up now as I keep always saying make sure you rename these straight away otherwise you'll quickly get too many of them and it'd be very hard to determine which was which so we're going to call this one end dialogue so the end dialogue function has got to do a few things it's got to first of all hide the dialogue UI and then it's got to tell the AI to stop talking to the player and then finally it's got to return control back to the player so in your end dialogue task we're going to do uh, execute receive execute AI and on here the first thing we're going to do is get our dialogue widget and hide it so for that we have to get our blackboard so on the variables add new variable and we'll call this bb underscore dialogue ui and that is a variable type of blackboard key selector and you want to make it editable by taking instance editable little eyeball should show up here drag this out and you get and you want to type in get blackboard value as object this returns a generic object okay so we need to cast this to the particular one we're going for in this case we're going to cast to a widget and we're going to plug that in like so and as widget we're going to set visibility to hidden Okay, so that's task one. We got the Blackboard uh, dialog UI, which we're storing the reference to the UI element. We're getting the Blackboard value from this container. We're casting it to the widget, because this is generic. We need to get a specific thing, which is a widget. And the widget, we can now set the visibility of that said widget. So that's task one. And the next part is to get the AI to stop its dialog. So for that, we are going to get a owner controller drag this out and cast to the NPC AI so what you typically would do is you would have uh, this AI controller here that we've been using as like a sort of parent AI controller and then you have multiple AI controllers for each of your NPCs if they are that different from each other but this will go towards the casting of your parent AI controller so as NPC AI we're going to drag out from here and set to stop uh, oh, uh, not stop uh, we need to create a function first of all sorry my bad so let's go into our NPC AI Doo -doo -doo. there it is okay so we've got a start dialog here just get rid of this print string, we don't need that anymore. So we've got start dialog and we're gonna have an end dialog. So um custom event end dialog. And from here we need to tell it to stop all logic from the brain. So type in brain and you'll see get brain component. Now the brain component is what's running the AI itself, this behavior tree. When you say run behavior tree, it's actually telling the brain component to do all of its business. So on the brain component, we're going to drag this out and go stop logic. And that just stops the behavior tree and removes it from being run. Click compile, go back to your end dialog. 
and as MPC AI we can drag out of here and go end dialog function okay and that's task 2 done so to recap we've got the AI controller we cast to the specific AI controller we want in this case the parent AI controller and then on the AI controller we have a function which is getting the brain component which is what runs the AI and telling it to stop its logic so it stops being smart for example and then on end dialog the task has happened so the last thing we need to do is get the uh, player controller uh, back to the player so for that we need to get the player controller and then from there we need to uh, first of all hide the mouse cursor so we're going to go set show mouse cursor and we're going to make sure it's unticked okay and then from in get player controller um, we're going to enable input and the input for this we need to see you have a target and a player controller the get player controller obviously should go into the player controller and disconnect the target the target itself is the get player character like so click compile and so what we've got here the player controller we're telling it to hide the mouse cursor and then we're getting the player character and telling it to enable the input from the player controller so now we can move the character again once we finish with that we're going to finish execute and tick the success button click compile go back to your dialog tree and let's add our end dialog task making sure that your bb dialog ui the blackboard variable we made is equal to the dialog widget so let's test this click save and let's go test so go up to npc push e to interact there's our first line there's our second line and it's closed and we've got control back and if i go up to him again first line second line and back and that is how we end the dialogue so now we've got the basics of the dialogue tree in there we're going to go and add the, the ability to ask questions to the player and have the player to start responding and we'll do that in the next episode so thanks very much for watching if you have any comments or questions please leave a comment below um, thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed yourselves and learned something new if you have learned something new please consider uh, donating at least one dollar over to patreon.com forward slash ryan Ailey. and over there you'll get access to uh, all the videos early before anyone else sometimes up to a month or more um, access to our discord where you get to join our community of growing game developers or helping each other out um, as well as many other benefits up behind the scenes videos beta access to my projects uh, and depending on how much you uh, donate you can have access to the project files themselves you can also get your game reviewed by myself and look uh, and uh, spoken about on my channel uh, i can also have uh, phone conversations with you um over the internet about a particular project you on and you want help with head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan lady and you can see uh, how your support can allow me to support you more um so yeah thank you very much I want to say a massive thank you to Alex Ponomarev, uh, Frank Baum, Chris Murray and Michael Kumbus for supporting me massively over on Patreon. Um, they've donated at top tiers, so big shout out and thank you to you guys. You are amazing um, and uh, I, I can't stress how much, how, how much you've helped me out a, a lot. Uh, thanks to your help, you're going to see a lot more videos coming very soon, uh, a lot more streams happening as well. Uh, so I'm starting to get more equipment. Uh, a whole lot more in, uh, different types of videos as well hopefully trying to make this a sort of a haven for all games development needs and uh, learning so big shout out thank you to you guys uh, for your, all your support and uh, i'll see you all next time on the next episode bye bye thank you